Ever noticed how The Simpsons has repeated itself a lot? I don't blame them. When I turn 31 years old, I'll still be walking and talking the same way I did when I was 8 years old. But given how much pop culture's changed, and how the show's identity has still kept morphing over the decades, it can be interesting to see what it has to say about different generations' attitudes on health, marriage, school, and religion, among other things. But let's see how it handles cartoon creation and the animation industry. After all, this provides the most obvious meta-commentary. Welcome to the showdown. Today, I'll be talking about the Season 4 episode, The Front, the one where Bart and Lisa start writing itchy and scratchy cartoons, and it'll be competing with the Season 13 episode, I Am Furious Yellow, the episode where Bart creates comic book character turned webtoon, Angry Dad. There may be a nine year gap between their airings, but I like both episodes about the same. Each has something to say about what the animation industry looked like at the time, but aren't without their storytelling hiccups. Which one do we quote like parrots? And which one did I rant about on my Simpsons blog 15 years ago? As always, the earlier episode is up first, The Front. One day on the Krusty the Clown show, an itchy and scratchy episode so boring is shown that Bud and Lisa agree they can make a better one. After writing the story up, about Scratchy going to the barbers, getting his face eaten by fire ants, then shot by Elvis, they send it to Itchy and Scratchy Studios, only to be swiftly rejected by Roger Myers Jr. It's only successful when they put their grandpa Abe's name in front of it, who doesn't mind the money, but doesn't know what he's getting credit for. I think this episode is good at showing the frustrations of the TV animation industry at the time. The stories were usually neutered to appease moral guardians, the bosses were grouchy, careless products of nepotism, and the writers were a bunch of pretentious Harvard graduates. The way these views on the industry were told through the jokes is as natural as classic Simpsons can be. It's blunt but delightful when the writers make fun of themselves. The hell with cartoons. I'm gonna do what I've always dreamed of. I'm gonna write that sitcom about the sassy robot. And just like that, Futurama was born. There's also some digs at other animated shows, like Ren and Stimpy and its long production cycle, but He-Man? That had been over for eight years at this point. I think the most resonant element to the front is Abe, because he has some pretty funny lines, and his path to finding out what he's working on is the most interesting arc in the episode. Even then, it pales in comparison to the arcs you see in other classic episodes like Three Men in a Comic Book or The Last Temptation of Homer. I guess it's time to get into what I don't like about this episode. It feels really padded. A lot of the jokes are very disconnected if you think about them, few of them have to do with the plot. You get some good jokes, but you also get some very obvious wastes of time. There's also a B-plot where Homer goes to a high school reunion, which I see as an excuse to reuse animation and assets from the way we was, then it leads to him needing to go back to high school. And this is no Homer goes to college, you don't feel like he's learning anything from the experience. He has three very short scenes in the classroom, then the whole plot thread ends with little fanfare. Is there anything else they did to make this more drawn out than it needed to be? Well, they use the full title sequence and chorus line couch gag, and oh, this is the episode where the Ned Flanders cartoon comes from. Did I just watch something? All complaints aside, I still think The Front is a fair episode. My appreciation for its commentary on animation production surpasses my mixed feelings about the story and comedy. I guess commentary was an important strong suit of The Simpsons' early years. But screw that, we've got pop culture references! I Am Furious Yellow sees Springfield Elementary run out of guest speakers for their assemblies, so they go to an agency and find a popular animator, Jeff Jenkins, who shows an episode of Danger Dog. It's dumb and gross, and he's not a very accurate portrayal of modern cartoon creators, but it gets the kids excited about making their own characters, and Bart ends up making Angry Dad, based on Homer. The comic he makes quickly picks up traction, and an internet company soon comes to him to make a webtoon, which only enrages Homer further once he finds out about it, leading to the family questioning his rageaholic tendencies. As far as post-season 10 episodes go, this is one of the more popular ones, and for good reason. It has some grasp on a timely industry, that of upstart internet companies, and goes into what most of them did wrong in an entertaining way. Better than TV.com in particular just paid their employees through stocks until the bubble burst. And while they're not the star of the show, the web cartoons they show, like Bin Laden in a Blender, are reminiscent of old Newgrounds cartoons and games, and bring me back without fail. Characters are also pretty funny here. Stanley guest stars as himself, and he just hangs around in the Android's dungeon and slowly gets on comic book guy's nerves. It's one of my favourite guest spots, especially of the Al Jean years. 
And Homer's B-plot, where he tries to be a mellow yellow for once, is brief, but a little longer and more engaging than what we got in the front. It has a very wild and zany payoff, with Homer acting like the Hulk, but at least it's payoff. But make no mistake, I do have gripes with I Am Furious Yellow. While Danger Dog is good at showing how lowbrow kids' cartoons could be at the time, The Simpsons' shift to more on-model animation over time makes it look inaccurate to the type of show it was riffing on, like Cat Dog or Cow and Chicken. Likewise, Jeff Jenkins' personality of being a rude slacker makes him seem like The Simpsons writers were insulting then-new talent in the industry. I highly doubt Steven Hillenberg or Craig McCracken had the attitudes he embodies. Butch Hartman maybe, but not the majority. And if you don't like puke rays, rage boils, or dirty diapers in your family sitcom, well, dust off that fast forward button. Nevertheless, this is one of my favourite episodes of the modern era, as modern as 2002 was in the grand scheme of things. Not only did it tackle a new medium and expertly satirise it, but they earned their heartwarming ending in a way that a lot of episodes forget to. If you gave up on the show before this point, I bet you've already been recommended this episode, so I'll stop this train of thought right now. This here is a tough verdict to settle. Both may have their problems, I mean it's the Simpsons, they're begging to be criticised sometimes, but they have a shared strength in their digs at the problems of the animation industry, no matter what screen the shows are being made for. But if I had to pick one I like more, I'll go with I Am Furious Yellow. This is one of the few times an episode from the 21st century trumps one from the 20th, because when you strip away the commentary, you still get a good episode in I Am Furious Yellow, where Homer and Bart learn things and Stan Lee's still a hoot. But with the front, you get the sort of assorted gags that the show usually vetoed in favour of story back then. Let me know which one you prefer, and I'll see you soon for another showdown. Goodbye for now. Shh.